Hey guys, welcome back to Zero's Maverick Hunting. Deciding my top games of the last decade has proved to be more difficult than originally anticipated. Call it fate or luck, it's going to be a long time before I get this video done. Hopefully not as long as I anticipate. Speaking of which, uh, it's Friday the 13th, one of the unluckiest days of the year. Well, personally I choose to see it as Halloween in March, but to each their own. And Halloween, of course, reminds me of vampires, witches, and demons. Speaking of... I've got a little hidden gem here that was left in Japan, Gogo Ackman 2 on the Super Famicom. Akira Toriyama, a legend in the manga industry. With great hits like Dr. Slump and Dragon Ball, the man needs no introduction. He was also heavily involved in video games as an artist. He lent his talents to designing the art style of the Dragon Quest series, which single-handedly started the JRPG or console RPG. He was also involved in Chrono Trigger, one of the best RPGs for the Super Nintendo. Of course, many games were also based off of Toriyama's work, such as the staggering amount of Dragon Ball games. Gogo Ackman 2 is also based on a Japanese manga written by Akira Toriyama, though as you would expect, the game being in Japanese, I can't read any of the dialogue in it, meaning I'm needed to enlist some help. So. I have here with me an expert on Japanese retro games, the Ultra Healthy Video Game Nerd. Is that all I am to you? A free translation tool? You're not the only person I know who can speak Japanese. I know like three other people. But are they as good looking as me? Hmm. Whatever. I'm giving you a cameo, so take it or leave it. Anyways, for those wondering just what's going on in this game, it's based on a short-lived comic series by Akira Toriyama, the author of one of the most widely known and loved anime series in the entire world. Sandland, the main character, Ackman, is the son of the devil and has been sent to Earth to capture human souls. Unfortunately, his plans rarely work out, or sometimes he just gets plain lazy and wants to play some video games like a normal teenager. After being humiliated in the previous game, Ackman's sworn enemy, the Angel, aptly named Angel, has put together an army to take revenge and put an end to our hero, who is Satan incarnate, but he's the good guy. We quickly learn that Ackman's other detractors, a hodgepodge cast of Heaven's henchmen, have their own plans for disposing of him. After learning that Saint Michael has revealed the existence of a super weapon called the Metatron, so everybody, including Ackman, makes a mad dash to be the first to the Metatron, with dreams of riches, and, in the case of one bodybuilding angel, a harem. This idea of switching the roles of heaven and hell and making the group who we usually consider to be the bad guys into protagonists is probably something only a Japanese comic could pull off successfully, as the tongue-in-cheek characterizations make it easy to root for the soul-devouring son of the devil, Ackman. And who doesn't want to beat up some poser punk rockers every once in a while? Gogo Ackman 2 plays like a typical side-scrolling action platformer of the time. Ackman uses various weapons such as a sword, a gun, and a boomerang that can be powered up into a throwing sickle. On top of that, he also has bombs that can be used to clear screens of enemies and deal massive damage. Ackman also has quite a few moves he can make use of, such as a jump that gets higher when holding up, a jump kick, a sliding move, and breakdancing. Despite the extensive moveset at your disposal, the control isn't as polished as you'd think. Most of the time, the game controls fine, however, several times I've had jump inputs not register. It can be especially frustrating in boss fights when I spent lots of time trying to do the high jumps only for nothing to happen. The game contains five stages broken up into multiple segments, and even though it's a short game, it doesn't skimp out on variety. There are simple segments with no obstacles, auto-scrollers, vertical platforming, a decent-sized maze, minecarts, and even shoot 'em up segments. Another thing to note is, even though the game is short, it's pretty difficult. The standard platforming stages won't be much trouble, provided you don't die, as checkpoints are kinda scarce. The bosses and mini-bosses can also take quite a while to defeat, especially without weapon upgrades or bombs. Luckily, this game has unlimited continues, and each segment contains a checkpoint that you can start from, so there's that at least. The presentation is on point from the time frame. The art style has that 90s anime and manga feel that Akira Toriyama's work is famous for, so if you enjoyed his other works such as Dragon Ball or Chrono Trigger, you'll probably get this game's vibe. Graphics aren't anything super impressive, but they look crisp and I don't have a huge problem with them. Sound, however, is another story, with the sound effects being pretty basic sounding. I initially thought the music was pretty average, but after listening to it again... It's pretty good! Gogo Ackman 2 is a pretty fun but somewhat average platformer on the system. It's not gonna turn any heads, but if you need a new side-scroller to play over an afternoon, it's worth giving it a shot. 
It's short but difficult, even on the easy setting, but the variety of mechanics and level design make it worth your time. Limited continues means no need for passwords, and there is a level select code if you need it. Playing a game on easy doesn't give you the end cutscene or the game's credits, but it's mostly in Japanese anyway, so unless you can read it, it's kind of a moot point. Besides, the only people who get caught up about difficulty settings are most likely the same elitist gamers who need to criticize how others play games in a vain attempt to feel justified in their gaming achievements. The game's price has gone up a little bit due to it being considered a hidden gem on the Super Famicom, but if you keep an eye out, you can find it for fairly cheap. With all that said, is GoGo Ackman 2 worth your time and money? Well, if you enjoy platformers from the 16-bit era, then it's a safe bet. This one lives up to its hidden gem status. Thanks again for watching this edition of Zero's Maverick Hunting, and thanks again to my special guest, Unaware Steve, I mean, the ultra-healthy video game nerd, for joining me. Oh, come on, I'm not that bad. I bought a Switch last year. Oh, really? And, uh, how many Switch games do you own that are actually new? More than the number of games you've beaten on normal mode? You son of a- Thanks again guys for watching this video, and thanks again to the ultra healthy video game nerd for coming in and helping me out with the Japanese on this video. Go check out his channel. Here on screen I'll be shouting out my Patreons, and if you'd like to join them, you can go to patreon.com slash Zeromaster, where for as little as a dollar a month you can get early access to videos, behind the scenes extras, and a whole lot more. If you like this video, give it a like and maybe share it around. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to get notifications. You can also keep up to date with me on social media at facebook.com slash ZeroMaster fanpage, on Twitter at ZeroMaster, and I stream on Twitch three times a week on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time on twitch.tv slash ZeroMaster. If you'd like to see my previous video on Sonic 2 and Knuckles, that'll be up here on the left. And on the right, I'll put up whatever the latest video from the ultra-healthy video game nerd is. Thanks again for watching, take care, and have a demonic Friday the 13th.